Milan Expo 2015 is in full swing. The six-month exhibition devoted to food and all the issues around it is expected to attract millions of visitors to the northern Italian city. But mingling with the aromas of world cuisine is the whiff of corruption. With investments totaling some 14 billion euros, it was too tempting a dish for the Mafia to resist. The Expo became another battleground in the war against organised crime. Last year, after the arrests of politicians and executives accused of bribery linked to the event, the Italian government introduced legislation to increase transparency in procurement procedures. An investigation unearthed a criminal network, the so-called Contract Coppola, that had attempted to influence the awarding of Expo contracts. In relation to two Expo contracts, there was interference in the tendering for contract procedure, bribery and other criminal practices had been used to influence the bidding process. It was a clear case of corruption. The inquiry plunged Italy back into the dark days of the early 1990s, when the country was tarnished with the image of endemic and indelible corruption. It cast an ominous shadow over Milan Expo, which organisers had hoped would present the country as a vibrant, dynamic and innovative international hub. Naturally, I was worried because my job was to represent Italy in the best way and to make sure the opening took place on time. With all these criminal investigations, we wasted months. Everything came to a standstill and this had many consequences. Some people resigned. Naturally, we were worried. The delays in the construction work provoked further controversy. Just one month before the inauguration, the Oscar-winning production designer Dante Ferretti revealed that his project had not been completed for reasons beyond his control. He cut his ties with the beleaguered event. I told my lawyer, I'm sorry, I don't want to take part in the expo anymore. I have my reputation to protect. Ferretti had worked for four years on the design of the two main roads leading into the expo site. In the end, he was persuaded to rescind his withdrawal, despite the delays and the scaling back of his original designs. I received a telephone call from Italy's former president, Giorgio Napolitano who I know personally. He said, Ferretti, I spent so much time bringing the Expo to Milan. I'm very sorry about what's happened. Can we postpone the opening of your scenic design for the Decumano Road to Republic Day on the 2nd of June? Yes, I said. Everything is possible. The investigations targeted a criminal conspiracy aimed at influencing procurement by promising career advancement to public officials through high-level political patronage. One of the seven officials arrested is alleged to have said to a potential contractor, I'll give you all the contracts you want if you give me a hand with my career. Firstly, our inquiries did not slow down the expo activities because work on the building sites was not stopped. Secondly, the inquiries made it possible to confirm that certain crimes were taking place and, as far as possible, to prevent these crimes from being repeated and prevent the situation regarding the Expo tenders from getting any worse. Also scrutinised as part of the investigation was the Expo's Italian pavilion, which had suspiciously high workforce and building costs. Italy's National Anti-Corruption Authority, under the guidance of anti-mafia prosecutor Raffaele Cantone, monitored the Expo's bidding processes with a special operations unit. The National Anti-Corruption Authority has received special powers for the Expo. 
Since June last year, we've been monitoring all bidding processes. We've also taken action against some tenders by putting them under temporary receivership. Overall, it was a courageous action. Our control system of the bidding process has caused ripples internationally. The OECD, which has cooperated with us in monitoring activities, has held up our model as an example to be used in other cases. For the Expo, the National Anti-Corruption Authority put into temporary receivership two tenders that were being investigated, but the work wasn't suspended. The temporary receivership acts as a substitute for the entrepreneur in regard to a specific tender, so that this person is in charge of a specific bid within the company. Investigators further claim that private companies in the Lombardy region are in business with mafia groups, especially the Andrangheta. The prefect of Milan issued 80 anti-mafia cautionary notes about dozens of companies that were banned from working on contracts. Milan has been in recent months a laboratory to check the usefulness of new anti-mafia cautionary measures and the tool of temporary receivership. The National Anti-Mafia Bureau says organised crime targets small commissions, less than €150,000, the threshold above which routine anti-mafia inspections are triggered. La mafia di solito uh, utilizza the Mafia usually uses front men when taking part in bids. When the Mafia wants to lay its hands on a territory, it uses insidious methods by identifying and helping weak, fragile and vulnerable subjects and businesses in need but then it co-opts them in the system. In northern Italy, the Mafia works through intimidation and relies on the complicity and silence of those it intimidates. Experts say the Mafia has managed to infiltrate Italian society, setting roots deep into the Lombardy economy. The Expo is the first big event to be characterized by dark shadows and strong light. The grey area was hit by several bans on entrepreneurs and their intermediaries, and irregular companies have been excluded from the Expo. After investigations led by the Prefect's office and by the Public Prosecutor's office, Expo is now a mafia-free event. Mafia free. Observers say the Expo can be seen as Italy in miniature with all its vices and virtues, old and new. Economists are divided on the real benefits that the event can bring to the country. But on one point they all agree. To return to growth, Italy has to eliminate its greatest evils, corruption and mafia influence on the free market.